Um, hello everybody, my name is Sanat Fahuri and today I'll be talking about amorphous metals. So, what is an amorphous metal? An amorphous metal, or also known as metallic glass or glassy metal, is a solid metallic material, usually an alloy, with disordered atomic scale structure. Most metals are crystalline in the solid state. Um, this means that they have a highly ordered arrangement of atoms. Um, I'll be providing pictures later on about this uh, uh, arrangement. Amorphous metals are usually structurally and chemically homogeneous, which gives, which gives them isotropic properties attractive for many applications. Amorphous metals are technically glasses, but they are much tougher and less brittle than the regular oxide glasses and ceramics. Uh, regular oxide glasses might, uh, might mean the, the windows of our um, houses and so on, uh, the regular um, glasses we use every day. Um, when was it produced and what was the process uh, implemented? The first successful production of amorphous metal or, uh, occurred in Caltech in 1960. This unique um, glass forming alloy was cooled extremely and rapidly to avoid crystallization. By the 1990s, new amorphous alloys were being developed at a much lower cooling rate by using uh, methods of simple casting into metallic molds. Um, one of the common and the easiest ways of producing uh, such amorphous metals include uh, water uh, quenching. Um, so here uh, in this uh, slide, there's a picture provided um, which is a, which shows um, one of the processes used uh, to produce amorphous metals. So you have uh, three M uh, um, elements uh, and salt. It can be KNO3 or KBr. Uh, the temperature should be less than 320, 310 Celsius, and it should be heated for about 90 minutes, and you'll have your amorphous um, metal nanosheets. Um, now I'll be discussing uh, about the process water quenching in more details and I'll be providing a video. Uh, so in material science, quenching is the rapid cooling of a workpiece in water, oil or air to obtain certain material properties. This allows quenching to start at a lower temperature, making the process much easier and also faster. Um, however, uh, the time uh, for uh, the object to be uh, cooled uh, varies uh, whether we're using water, oil, or air. My example will be uh, used using uh, regular water. Um, so, what are the properties of amorphous metals? Um, uh, in the slides above, I mentioned the structure of uh, these amorphous uh, structure. You can see in the picture provided that the metal structure is usually uh, highly ordered with a specific arrangement, and the, the particles are usually the same uh, size. Um, however, in amorphous structure, uh, the, the sizes of these particles vary, and there's no arrangement. Um, uh, their atoms uh, are... Uh, uh, disordered and they have a non-crystalline uh, structure and it uh, is obviously uh, glass-like um, so now I'll be talking about the mechanical properties of amorphous metals uh, number one it has a high yield strength combined with excellent duct ductility two times higher than steel uh, second of all it has high fracture toughness third of all it has um, high hardness good wear and uh, Ab uh, abrasion uh, resistance like ceramic and also has isotropic behavior uh, which uh, means a material having identical values of a property in all directions and the picture in the picture provided you can notice um, uh, a scale showing uh, comparing amphor 
amorphous metal alloys with steel and with a TI grade 5 uh, strength hardness ductility and young modulus is compared please note that young modulus is a mechanical property that measures the stiffness of a solid material so you can see that uh, the amloy uh, had greater uh, hardness, strength, and ductility than th these two. However, uh, its stiffness uh, was uh, greatly less than that of steel, and uh, there's almost um, a slight difference between it and between the TI grade 5. And now I'll be talking about the electrical and magnet uh, properties. Number one, they have uh, high magnetic permeability, uh, two, uh, electric electrical resistivity. Uh, nearly temperature independent so once we increase or decrease the temperature uh, the, resist the resistivity uh, to electricity does not change uh, last but not least it's easy to magnetize and demagnetize so um, how uh, where are these amorphous methods used and how do they uh, help in our daily lives so number one they uh, help in the production of uh, liquid metal and vitrilloy uh, using amorphous metals alloys to manufacture various items like um, watches and uh, cell phone covers so we all notice that the new cell phone covers usually include uh, a glass like um, uh, let's say cover at the back of it uh, and also the watches uh, uh, usually include amorphous uh, metals uh, due to its uh, uh, special properties uh, which we, which was discussed above and will be discussed again um, uh, they have high tensile strength and excellent resistance to harmful corrosion that uh, surpass several metals. Um, they also have a high uh, COR. Uh, the COR uh, is the ratio to the, of the final initial relative velocity between two objects after they collide. Uh, having a high COR will reduce the probability of this glass to be scratched, making it really special and also efficient when using things that we use in our daily lives. Um, number two, amorphous metals are highly used in the heavy industry, uh, industrial machinery. Um, various amorphous metals are used as protective coatings for industrial machinery um, on uh, petroleum drill pipes, as you can see in this picture, and for boiler tubes and electrical plants. Um, mentioned it can be also used in the industrial machinery. Um, Use number three, in some cases the metals can replace titanium in certain applications for military vehicles and weapons. It was used by, uh, by uh, for military uh, users due to its special, uh, special physical uh, traits which will be discussed below. Um, use number four is that amorphous metals uh, can be used in the nuclear energy industry by making containers for uh, nuclear waste disposal. So in the pictures here on the right, you can see these uh, nuclear waste disposals. Um, here you can see the glass tank ceramics, which uh, uh, usually includes the amorphous uh, metals. Uh, such uh, material can't be exposed to uh, um, any human being because the radioactivity of this nuclear waste will uh, definitely harm uh, the human and uh, the people uh, around it so it has to be insulated in a really good way um, and now why is it so commonly used why do we see these amorphous metals in each and every industry and in the energy and whether it was in the energy field or in our daily lives or uh, military wise number one it has a, a biocompatibility and corrosion resistance um, amorphous lightweight materials made of titanium are twice as strong as the usual crystalline titanium based compositions so this means that um, amorphous metals have uh, higher strength with less weight which makes it really special number three it has a high uh, quality surface finish haptic and scratch resistance i just mentioned that it has a high cor um, which is uh, massively required for our uh, lifestyle products and uh, also amorphous metals um, uh, have the absence of the phase transition from liquid to solid. This leads to the avoid avoidance of high shrinkage which, which in turn enables the manufacturing of net shape products. So you can see here a graph comparing the elastic limit and the yield strength of 
ستيلز كريستالاين تايتانيوم الويز اند امورفوس ميتلز سو امورفوس ميتلز هاد ذا هاي ستيل سترينث هاوفر ذا بلاستكس هاد مور اليستيك ليميت وذ ريلي ماينر ديفرنس So I just mentioned that it also uh, is highly corro uh, corrosion resistant, and this is a proof. So uh, corrosion rate here it's per uh, distance unit and time unit. Um, crystalline stainless steels uh, were compared to different alloys. You can see that with uh, uh, at 40 uh, degrees it had around 18. Both of them had around 18, and it increased when we increased the temperature. However, looking at amorphous alloys, they all seem to have zero corrosion even after increasing the temperature they also had zero corrosion um, I'd like to uh, uh, thank you all for listening and I believe that amorphous metals is um, massively important for our daily lives and it will be uh, substituting titanium because titanium is now uh, being really hard to extract um, to transport uh, due to its uh, weight and um, uh, that's it thank you for listening